I thought I take a look at the top 10 talks at meeting C++ 2024. Now that we're basically two weeks away from the conference, I thought let's compare the voting results to what it looks at the moment uh, based on views uh, at the website, which are the popular talks and which are not. Um, and so this leads to a top 10 um, based on views and quickly want to mention the keynotes. We recently did an interview with Titus Winters. Uh, Hanna Dusikova is giving a keynote on her favorite data types. Herb Sutter is speaking about the next decade with C++. And Peter Samala then closes the conference with his keynote on, you know, how we learn things again, again, and again. And so um, one of those keynotes made it into the top 10. That's why the top 10 is a top 11. And also it's not so much a coincidence that this has happened because um, I, you know, get to that when, when we're at that keynote. For now, um, let's compare the voting results for talk acceptance and the top 11 talks form the main track in this uh, traditionally versus how this has held up to uh, be at, you know, popular in this top 10 now. And from my website, these are the top 11 or 14 actually voting results. Uh, two talks of the top 11 were not accepted um, because Klaus Eagleberger had two talks and Bryce Arch and Lelbach had also two talks um, in the top 11. And I don't want to choose uh, that I give speakers two talks. In that case, it would have been possible because both of them are very accomplished and experienced speakers now. Um, but I thought it would be more better, in, especially in a year where, like this year, where we had a lot of submissions that we have, like one speaker giving one talk. Um, then later I had to replace the talk and by a speaker that is not able to make it to the conference. And that is how Klaus Eagleberger's design pattern talk um, got accepted, but not in the main track. And this is a lot based on the voting result, which also kind of, you know, is based on popularity, how your talk title is like seen by folks and some other things which, you know, makes the influence on voting decisions for folks. Um, and over the result of over 200 voting sessions, we usually, usually get a very good result. And this is a very nice main track. Um, but when we go into, you know, what's popular now, um, then this is basically a snapshot from today and in two weeks it probably will be different and in three weeks i probably do another of this i repeat this to see what changed um now the first place in our top 10 is also the first place in the voting and this is the c plus plus modules talk by andreas weiss this is not a coincidence and i'll get to all the various things why people are in which position in the popular voting now um not, not popular voting like popular results um later also second place again is the second place from the voting templates made easy with c plus plus 20 roth michaels speaking on this very interesting talk and again gets a lot of interest online then we have again a talk from the main track but as you see they are on day two uh, an incomplete guide to c++ object lifetimes by jonathan miller jonathan has been a long time speakers at meeting c++ so it's not a big surprise that his talks are popular and um that is then also kind of um seen in here and Herb's keynote is the one keynote that makes it into this very, very popular uh, talks which have received, you know, again, this is based on use. So 
Um, we have done a lot of things with uh, Herb's keynote, which have increased the views. He has been with other talks in a linked in some newsletters, but also we had the armor, which has got a lot of attention. And so that's why Herb's keynote makes it into the top 10. And I as well also decided to make it a top 11 because the keynotes don't count, right? They're, they're, they're popular always. Um, then um, one of the folks which actually also got into the main track, but not like in the top results of that, is now also here directly after Herb, um, Andreas Fertig with fast and small C++ when efficiency matters. Um, that is a very interesting talk, which will you know have bits and pieces which are, which are interesting to you and handles also like you know what what changes with that with C plus plus twenty three. Very interesting talk, and I think um, the second person I interviewed uh, was Andreas for this conference. Classes C plus plus twenty three style is one of the other talks which is now in this which hasn't made it to the main track. Uh, Sebastian Theophil talks at day one in track B. And so this talk, you know, was good in the voting, but not good enough to make it into the main track. And actually seeing like uh, an opinion on what classes should look with C23 and what 23 has to offer for, you know, improving your class styles will be interesting to see. And this is like one of the talks I'm really looking forward to. Um, and then we have the Aging Programmer by Kate Gregory, which actually is a keynote from another conference. And I was kind of curious when I saw that she submitted that as a normal talk to my conference. How would it do in the voting? Would it even make it into the conference? And actually, it did pretty well in the voting. Um, but then it's not in the main track, of course. It's like not really such a talk. But I am really happy. And this, you know, this is such an important topic for, for a lot of us. And actually, everyone, right? We are, we are all getting older. So um, either it's in our present or in our future. So. Thank you, Kate. That will be really a great, another great talk to be at. Um, and here we see Klaus Eagleberger, who had two talks in the voting very high up, and one of them makes it into this. The other one um, on the design patterns was accepted later and hasn't had the time to get enough views to even be close to this. So. Um, that's one of the effects which plays a role here being popular right now, right? And um, yeah, Klaus is known for his book and actually he gives an interview on Friday. Um, so Klaus talks, there's no silver bullet. It's in the main track on day one. And it's very great uh, to see his many talks always be very popular at the conference. Um, the other talk by his by him is like directly in the first slot um, in occurrence with a module talk. So some people might you know, decide to go to, to class. Um, then we have uh, an overview on C++ concepts done by Nicola Yosotis. Also not very surprising in the main track and is now also in the top 10. Nicola also gives uh, two trainings. One of them is here visible. Uh, generic programming in C++ with templates in auto. And on the another day, that is this is November 29th, I think, is a Friday. It's concepts, ranges, and views. So basically what he's doing a little bit in his talk, you can, can have as a training. And the, the first day is on generic programming in C++ with templates in auto. And then you go into concepts, ranges, and views, which is very similar. Um, and you can book that at the, at the website. And then we have a new speaker, and I'm very happy that she made it in the top 10. Uh, Kerstin Keller will speak about clean CMake for C++ library developers, which I think is like really an important and interesting topic. And I think it's like CMake is something where we still 
have some popularity that those talks make it into the conferences but also i think that we should have more opinions and voices on um you know what is important with CMake, how should that look? And so I'm very happy to have a, a talk on CMake by a new speaker. And um, that's another great talk. Then Bryce Adelstein Lelbach is also in the top 10 for the popular talks. Um, he'll be giving a talk on the C execution model. Um, and I do think that's what he writes here is, yes, it's very important as a C++ programmer that you should understand that that is a part of our language and that is how our language interfaces with the important parts in where we are running our code, right? So um, we should kind of see what um, the mindset kind of if of C++ is. And this is a very interesting talk I'm looking forward to like, you know, all other talks, but then we have the last talk. Um, portable floating point calculations. Guy Davidson uh, will talk about his effort to specify a better standardization of floating point calculations and what this entails to, you know. Um, he gave actually an interview on that with, with us in, a few weeks ago, and so, I'm looking forward, like what he has to say about that, and um, also kind of you know looking forward how this progresses with the standard. Um, very interesting topic. A lot of people are interested, and um, having a better portability of floating point calculations from just normal machines to gaming consoles to handhelds to mobile platforms. Um, Guy, Guy Davidson is, is a gaming programmer, so naturally um, games do a lot of floating point calculations. And the example he brought is like, you know, when, when we do simulations and we run it on various machines, um, the results differ because the floating point calculations are often depending on hardware things and or software things and they, they differ from platform to platform. And it's really difficult to um, like have a racing game which shows the position of the car correct if they, you run the simulation locally and running like the simulation not on the client but on the server is some, is some like a possibility to solve that. But then you have a problem with a the, with the delay to the client. So that's very interesting to see and not owns only the gaming industry is interested in that also he told me that he has been in contact with various groups and mentioned especially the financing you know financial part where trading companies etc do things and of course they you know trade and they also have uh, floating point numbers where they would prefer that the calculations are correct um and this is the top 11 as you see, there's a bit of a spread in the views from number one to number 11, which is natural. And I've already hinted at some things. Now let me talk how this gets to be that, like that. And should I use this to you know, restructure the main track, et cetera? Um, short answer to that is no. Um, the long answer is this has been for the moment, usually influenced by some of the newsletters which I've sent. And those newsletters had topics like the C++ committee or the top talks or learn C++ at meeting C++ and then things which are interesting in that part. And I can't always link all 30 or 33 talks or 44 talks at the whole conference. So mostly I've linked like what fits into a certain grouping. And then I do post every talk at least once in social media. And those postings differ in audience attention and how well they do. Um, and I think one of the reasons that some of them are here in the top 10 now is that this just has been a popular post in social media. And another thing which I uh, do have to mention is 
the other thing that plays a big role in that, and it's not as much anymore, but it does play, and it's like why is Andreas why is on top, um, and Ross Michaels behind it. They have the two top positions in the schedule. They are the first talks visible, right? You have the opening keynote, and then that is them. And then also when I publish the talks first, it's a talk directory. And whoever ends up being on top of that gets more clicks than the talk that is on bottom of that. Um, that has now evened out mostly, but some of that is um, playing a role in here too. People are just, which are just casually looking at the schedule, will often not scroll down to the last day. So it's really nice to see that some of the talks have made it to um, the top 10, which are not on the first day, or which have not been so much being featured uh, in newsletters, et cetera. And so I expect uh, that a lot of that still is changing. And I really look forward in three weeks to look at this again and to see what changed. Um, some of the structural advantages, like Andreas Weiss, will always be the the first talk and the first track, and getting a lot of attention that way, um, of course, will not change. And maybe some other talk becomes more popular, becomes viral on um, social media. Some speakers post their own talks. And when they have a lot of following, that can have a big influence. Um, I've made a big effort this year to filter out more of uh, certain effects. Like when you post something on social media, you have a lot of, um, it's not bots, but like social media loading um, or like caching your post or your link. And so you get a lot of uh, servers querying your website and not actually people looking at your website. And I've been better with that this year. So that's why like no one has like a thousand views. Um, in the past, it was like a thousand or two thousand views in the top 10. And there was a lot of that was bots and that's not filtered out. So that's a very interesting result. But of course, the conference is in two weeks and a lot of people that make the decision to go to the conference uh, have not looked at the schedule yet. And they will look at the schedule for sure in the next three weeks. And then things will look totally different. And with that, see you in Berlin. Tickets are still available for Berlin and online. Should mention that um, one third of our audience actually is now online. And uh, like you who see this, still watching, thank you. Um, so that's what meeting C++ you know, is basically doing for getting funding. And then the rest of the year, I work on posting stuff on for free on social media, make videos, etc. And so if you want to support my work, um, the best way, of course, is if your employer can send you to Berlin, you can do that and you can join us and be with us or join us online. And um, your trainings budgets are still there. They need to be spent on the last quarter. That is an opportunity to join us for having a lot of fun with C++. And um, I do not sell early video access extra, okay? Every single ticket that is sold has the video access after the conference included, okay? And with that, thank you for listening. And I'm looking forward to see a lot of you and all those talks in Berlin in two weeks. Two weeks until meeting C++ 2024 gets started.